AAW faithful. Jo thank you for joining us here on YouTube, fresh off the heels of AAW Uno Mas. We are here at Irving Hall. My name is Tyler Bowles. Joining me on the call, Joe Dombrowski and Joe, eight hungry athletes about to kick it off on AAW Alive. Excited to be here in a brand new building for AAW as we continue to grow, we continue to expand, and with that comes the youth move with the next generation. We are seeing eight athletes that are hungry. They're full of energy. We have seen so many athletes in recent times from your Damian Chambers to Isaiah Moore to Heather Reckless, and the list goes on and on. Trevor Outlaw, athletes that have started alive and have grown to become a major part of our pay-per-views as well. We're seeing that next iteration, that next generation here kicking us off this month. We got Amina Belmont squaring off with Eric Esnight. Calls himself the 13th disciple. And he just got five across the face for his troubles. Well, he may need divine intervention here to stand up to the uh, oh. Phoenix Princess. I mean, of Elmont, who is as tough as they come, do not let size and stature fool you. One thing that has always stood out to me about Amina Belmont is how she hits with intent. Every single strike she throws means purpose as she takes down S Knight with the Fez Press. And he grabs the good book. Yeah, he's hiding behind his dogma and, and, and tagging out very quickly. And you know, watching Amina Belmont reminds me of a name I mentioned a moment ago that is also fearless, has also stood up to people much la larger than her, and that's Heather Reckless. Yeah, you know, we saw, we saw it at Uno Mas, Heather Reckless going one-on-one -on -one with Joe Alonzo. Alonzo with a little bit of a devious means for lack of a better term, trying to take away Heather Reckless's career. Conan Lycan coming out, seems like the, the dissension of smooth operations is quickly coming as Sahara with a cover on Ezio Orlandi, only able to get the two. Nice bridge on uh, the Alphasaurus there from Paris Sahara, who got a big victory in a uh, multi-athlete tag match a month ago. But listen, bottom line is Joe Long's the snake. Bottom line is he looks down at everybody else and Chuck Smooth is feeding into his ego, being the EVP, the chosen one, the center of all the attention. And for somebody with as fragile of an ego and insecure of a mind as Alonzo, to fill that up with even more hot air means he's even more dangerous than he's ever been. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen June 10th when we're back here at Earth Hall ah, oh. to destroy when we're going to have Alonzo. We're gonna have Lycan, Heather Reckless, Chuck Smooth, so many of the AAW best are gonna be in the building on that night. Back here once again at Irving Hall, June 10th for Crush and Destroy. Granted Jolly by the debuting of the champion a moment ago into the tag to EDA's club. Great teamwork here and uh, athleticism personified in the early going of Alive. You never know what you're gonna see in a matchup quite like this. It's a breakneck pace. Nesra heading up to that high red district and a cross body taken down. Shane Boucher, but the Alpha Saurus Flex coming in at the last second, saving his partner. And a shoulder tackle taking Inesra off of his feet. Straight up power, barrels over his foe. And switching gears, switching that pendulum. Overwhelming with a power slam. Well, and let's think about it. The last time that we saw Orlandi here on AAW Live, it was three against one, and all three of them fell down to the destruction of Xavier Walker as he eats that bulldog. It was a handicap match. The three needed more people. Oh my goodness. The Huntsman turning Sahara into the hunted inside out with that knee strike as he's calling his shot saying, hey Malik Champion, you want to make an AAW debut? Huntsman with an intensity. He got shot out of a, a barrel of a shotgun, but Malik showing out Aranagi. Hiranagi takes him off of his feet. A young man, he cites, cites Shelton Benjamin as one of his major influences, and he eats that double stomp off the top. Boucher, you know, he's, he's talked about how overlooked and feel disrespected he feels here in AAW. Innovative Shiranu by Amina Belmont. And now S Knight looking to read the last will and testament. Inside Belmont, Cradle! Inside Cradle by Belmont! Gonna get to W! Oh, I love it! Four very different individuals, In four very victorious seconds, individuals. Your winners, the team of Paris Sahara, Iniesta, Malik Champion, and Amina Belmont! I'm a big fan of believing what you want when you try to force it on somebody else. It usually comes back 
to bite you in the rear end. It did here, and a great victory for individuality. Think of yourself here alive. I'm trying to think of something good to say about Axel Rico, but it just doesn't happen. We're going to go off the air before that happens. You realize that, right? What I do have is I have one question for you, Dombrowski. I'm ready. What's shaking? Former AAW Heritage Champion Matt Crotch Mayday making an AAW return. Uh, Crotch, certainly a big part of AAW's legacy over the years and somebody that I think Axel Rico is going to look to overcome, play spoiler, a bit of an in-ring return. Crotch was always that unorthodox athlete, but very beloved by the Chicago faithful, right? Very beloved by the Chicago faithful and very successful in AAW. I mean, like I said, former Heritage Champion, really was one of the, the, the foundation pieces to what AAW was before we blew up into what we are now. Uh, speaking about some of those pieces, how about, you know, let's talk about Shane Hollister. Let's yeah. talk about, you know, his just, uh, just utter obsession with putting an end to Jossie and the disrespect of some of these AAW newcomers. Well, I think you can look at the juxtaposition between Crotch and Shane Hollister, the fact that Crotch is happy to be here. He's having a good time right now. He's picking up right where he oh. left off some 10, 12 years ago, two count in the ring. But uh, Crotch doesn't want anything handed to him. He doesn't want any special treatment. He's out here to, to work his way back up the top. If that's in the card, Shane Hollister expects everybody to, to bow down and roll out the red carpet for him. And wrestling moves fast. That's just not the way it is in reality. Think about somebody that wants the red carpet rolled out for him. Axel Rico is somebody that has said time and time again, it is my time and I'm sick of these relics from the past. Your Matt Crotch Maydays, your Tony Ricans. I'm sick of these people that, you know, were a part of AAW in the past. They're not the future. They are not what I can bring to the table. And he's very passionate about this. And I think he's letting it get the better of him. Axel Rico, you know, as much as I like to, you know, talk, you know, about how bad he is, he has potential. He just needs to get out of his own way. Axel Rico's a great athlete. I'm not taking that away from him, but I don't think any of these legends are out here claiming they're the future. I mean, you talk about Tony Rican, who, who I, I was just out there in, in, in the lobby, the way he greets these fans, the relationship he has with all of them, first name basis with many of them. I mean, he's part of our event staff. He, he, he's part of what makes our fans feel comfortable and safe, find their seats. He's an important part of this company. And for Axel Rico to be jealous that fans like him, and not Axel, but Axel just mouths off to everybody. It's ludicrous to me. Axel Rico meeting Mayday with that back elbow. Now putting the boots on him. Man, the way Axel Rico's going, Crotch isn't gonna know whether he's coming or going. Stinger splash in the corner by Rico. And he, look at that. Again, obsessed with Tony Rico, waving at him from the ring to the front door. You took your eyes off your opponent, you paid for it. Nobody home. And now Crotch feeling it, trying to get these AAW fans behind him. Ooh, you said Crotch is feeling it. Axel Rico firing away. Hey, Crotch can withstand a lot of pain oh. and punishment. Former tag partner is Zach Gowan. He's got some of that inspiration in him as well. Rights and lefts, and oh, what's he doing with the right? Oh, puts a little stank on it. Oh, that's a lot of stank. Fumunda cheese right hand. That was 13 years worth of stank. By Crotch, and Rico shuts him into the buckles, but nobody oh. home, drop toe hold, face first, goes Axel Rico. Hey, keep in mind, Crotch once upon a time beat Eric Cannon and Jimmy Jacobs for that heritage title. Not, he many, not many men can say that they've beaten one of those men, if not both of them, in a Bronco Buster, followed with a drop kick. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes you look at the book by its cover and you underestimate the toughness of what this man's truly capable of. He can play mind games, he can throw you up your game. Bottom line is though, he can go. And now Crotch, willing Rico back up to his feet, might be looking for a sliced bread. Axel sucks him into the buckles. Tyler, the he shoulder. was going for the Crotch Rocket. Oh! But nothing doing, Sit Axel out, Rico. Spine buster by Axel Rico, Rico victorious. Three minutes, 59 seconds, your winner, Axel Rico. Well, Axel Rico going a long way to establishing, oh. I guess, what he feels is his message. He's gonna, he's gonna tell us about it right now by himself. Does he have to? I hear all your boos and it just fuels me. But the one thing I want everybody here to recognize, that was a former AAW champion and a superstar in the class of Tony Rican. 
<laughs> so just a live little lesson. But that's just a side note, because personally, Tony, this week, I sent a couple messages to Anthony, your little boy, and he's a little brat like you and hard-headed, and he told me to go F myself. But oh. then when I, when I sent a couple other messages, someone of yours sent back almost immediately, like she wanted a little bit of Axel Rico, oh, come and that on. was hey. Mrs. Rican. Come on. And maybe, whoa. Hey, 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 no. relax, old timer. Relax, buddy. Tony, hey, yeah, come on. Come on, come on, Tony what Reagan you gonna do? Over the guardrails! Well, you, you don't play a man's pump card and put his family into this without there being a receipt. Rico went way over the line with that. Axel Rico knowing exactly what buttons to push. Oh, and from behind! Hey. Equalizes Tony Rican with a shot. Rican's head ricocheting off that bottom rope. Bottom line, Tyler, Tony Rican's not a wrestler anymore. He's a part of our event staff, and Rico just hit him from behind. But even though Rican's not a competitor, he's damn sure a man, and he had to stand up for himself and his family. He might not be a wrestler anymore, but he's a fighter at heart. And I think Axel Rico might have just wrote a check that his ass is going to have a long problem cashing. Shame on you, Axel. Two very, very impressive athletes that I have had my eyes on for a very long time, Joe Dombrowski. No Limit Matt Diesel and August Matthews about to go one-on-one -on -one here on AAW Alive. This is a very, very weird comparison, but I want you to stay with me. This is reminding me of a Myron Reed versus a Zachary Wentz like six, seven years ago. You know, that's, that's an incredible comparison to me because I know that Matt Diesel has sat under the Myron Reed learning tree a time or two in recent uh, 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 times. They've traveled the roads together. Matt has uh, looked to Myron for advice, for guidance. My question here, Tyler, August Matthews, one half of the Bang Bros, normally a tag team competitor. Will that be a hindrance to him one-on-one -on -one without his tag team partner for the first time that I've seen as oh. Diesel shows the vertical leap? Diesel calls himself no limits. He's got that Mamba mentality. Kobe Bryant inspired his favorite quote is once you know what failure feels like, determination chases success. Matt Diesel, no limits. That's how far he's gonna go to get that success. And he's looking, he's looking buff. He's looking, you know, in the best shape that we've ever seen him. I think he's really looking to get that statement victory here on AAW Live, get himself on the upper end of that card, and find himself, you know, going up against men, uh, you know, that, like Isaiah Moore, who had a breakout performance back at Uno Mas going one-on-one -on -one against the ego Robert Anthony. And these are two young athletes in their early 20s, the entire world ahead of them. But I think it's a bigger test for August Matthews. You mentioned oh. normally teaming with Davey Bang. We've seen them as a team a couple of times before here on Alive, but August first time one-on-one -on -one here on Alive. And you know, Tyler, you've been around the game so long that it's an entirely different strategy and workout regimen training for tag team versus one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, when you're, when you're you know, primarily a tag team specialist, it's quick bursts, it's you know frequent in and outs. You get that, that breathing opportunity. For lack of a better term, you find yourself with a timeout sometimes when you're in a tag team match. Going one-on-one -on -one with somebody, especially the caliber of Matt Diesel, it's all, it's, it's all gas, no brakes, much like breaking. It's, you're, you're going on that breakneck pace time and time again. But for August Matthews, you have to realize, hey, while I'm primarily a tag team specialist, the opportunity I have here tonight is a solos match. And I have to be at my very best, and I have to defeat Matt Diesel. I cannot let him get the better of me. Well, you're talking about leveling up. I saw Matt Diesel in Cincinnati a number of weeks ago as Diesel goes in for the cover, hooks the leg, two count only. Diesel went toe-to-toe -to -toe with an independent legend in his own right by the name of M Dog Matt Cross, and that was the best I'd ever seen Matt Diesel look. Uh, he's learning from the right people, he's studying the right people, he's showing out, he's gaining confidence. Matt Diesel, I agree with you, he's one to watch. You know, that's, you know going up against uh, people, that, you know, the caliber of, of men like M Dog, all that's gonna do is test you and make you the very best that you can be. I think Diesel's an example of somebody who's like, you want it bad enough, you can manifest it, you believe in yourself, you can make a dream of reality, but right now, August Matthews looking to to be the nightmare to crash that dream down as he takes away the vertical base. Incredible leap. Matthews, no doubt, has a height and a leverage and a reach advantage if he's able to utilize it. Oh! oh. 
Innovative cannonball into the corner by August Matthews. And again, that's exactly what Matthews has to do. You get the opportunity to make a statement, you gotta take advantage of it every single chance you get. Heading up to that high rent district, double stomp, nobody home. Hey, no one's gonna confuse August Matthews with Crash Jackson, but you keep that body in motion, you're gonna get a lot more velocity and impact on your strike as Matthews, living up to that, but walked right into the super kick. Walked right into a super kick, and an Enza Curry catches him on the back of the head. Oh, look at look at Diesel's eyes. He went right to the top turnbuckle. He's had this laser focus in his eyes since the second he came through that curtain here tonight. And you know what? That reminds me a lot of Myron Reed. I see a lot of Myron in this young man. And that's a huge compliment! And there's a splash, but... I don't like the fact that he didn't go for the cover, though. That is inexperience. That's going to be, you know, th that's going to be something he can learn from. Yeah, I, I don't think he landed the way he intended. I think he drove the wind out of himself for a moment. That gave August the opening. And all it takes is a split second for Matthews to try and create that opening. Eats that knee strike, charges in, and a boot to the face by August Matthews. Matthews now from behind. Oh, jeez. I have never seen a reverse DDT like that. Yeah, almost a standing aside DDT, but got an extra grip on the way down. And a double stomp off the top to the back of the head. Oh, he was as high as the balcony. And Matthews jackknifes him with the cover, and that's going to do it. Matt Diesel, a valiant, valiant performance. Four minutes, 38 seconds, your winner, August Matthews. Whether it's singles, whether it's tags, Tyler, get on the bus now, because August Matthews, the Bang Bros, are ones to watch. I'm not going on the bang bus. Axel. Axel. Yeah. Dude, what happened out there? You, well, first, you deck Tony Rican? What happened? Well, first off, I'm leaving because my job is done. Tony, I called him out. I made it personal, whatever. He finally got in the ring, and I thought maybe this is it. Time to show up and kick his ass. But no, he decided to turn his back on the Puerto Rican sensation of AAW. So what did I do? I had to show him. I had to get him riled up because Tony, I still am better than you, okay? So check off, I'll be here next month. I'll be here the next month. So if you decide to grab your cojones and whatever, let's wrestle already, all right? See you later, okay? Thank you, thank you. Two men that are no strangers to one another, Joe Dombrowski, Xavier Walker, and Joey Avalon. Gonna square off here on AAW Alive. Avalon looking to continue this wave of momentum that he's been on. He seems like he's really finding his grounding, his footing here in AAW. He certainly is, but what an obstacle to be put in front of you. <laughs> Xavier Walker has overcome one athlete. He's overcome three athletes. I mean, you could put the entire locker room out oh. here. I think I'm placing my bets. I think, and just like that, the entire locker room, well, in his mind, the entire locker room, the swag champ himself, Ren Jones, coming to the ring. We saw these two men join forces back at Uno Mas, uh, really taking Rush Jones kind of lightly. You know, they, they, they assaulted Rush Jones. Champ obviously not in the building, you know, not able to, to watch the back of his, of his tag team partner, the tag team champion. And I think, uh, Ren Jones and Xavier Walker realized the quickest way to get the glory is to get the gold. Yeah, it sounds like they were a bit opportunistic, but they put themselves in that conversation. And you know that Russ Jones has a temper. You know the chap has a temper. And all you need to do is breathe too hard in their direction, and you'll raise their ire and get probably three to five F-bombs out of them. Xavier Walker and Ren Jones want the gold. They want the adulation. They want the big money. And that's where you can find it right now. And I don't see a big long line stepping up to, to run Jones behind him. But I do see the power of the six foot six or seven Xavier Walker, who has been unbeaten since coming back to this company. He's somebody that has, has, has put so much power and so, gained so much confidence every time we've seen him here on a live, month after month. Avalon reaching for a rope cover. Avalon gets meaner, he gets nastier, he gets more aggressive. But in this situation, it comes down to something's got to give. You know, it's, it's these two men, they, they both are on that, that similar trajectory here in AAW. They're both men that we would consider to be the, the, the standouts of AAW Alive. I mean, Xavier Walker, he speaks for himself. Six foot seven, 270 plus, a right hand that I consider to be one of the most lethal in the game today. As a wise man once said, he's got the look, the size, the rap, 
I smell money. Is that Red Jones? I I'm sure Red Jones will take credit for that. Probably thought it on a flight one night. <laughs> and now Xavier Walker bringing things down, you know, slowing down the pace of this contest. He knows that Joey Avalon likes that aggression, likes that, you know, to, to hit hard, to hit fast, to hit with reckless intent and abandon. So what Xavier Walker is doing, he's neutralizing that. He's slowing Avalon down. He's making Avalon wrestle his pace. And that's a lot of weight leaning down onto Avalon, cutting off those air passages. You don't see Xavier slow the pace down or go to the mat very often, but that speaks to the toughness and tenacity of Avalon that Xavier cannot physically overpower him quite as much as he could his other opponents. Speaking of toughness and tenacity, how about that AAW Championship match back at Uno Mas, Fred Yehai, what a valiant effort. I don't know that there's any athlete in any where in wrestling more tenacious than Fred Yehai. The look in his eyes, the malicious intent that he possesses, the physicality each and every time. It was a banner moment for Jake something to be able to say he survived Fred Yehai because Fred Yehai is relentless as a rattlesnake. He doesn't stop unless you put him down for the long haul. And now, looking to put him down for the long haul is Joey Avalon, knee to the back, to the, to the side of the head. Oh! And a falcon arrow, Xavier Walker put down, stacks him with the cover. Only gets the two. Nobody kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. Is that the first time that Xavier's been elevated off his feet here on Live? I, if, it, if it's not the first, it's the first in a very, very long time. And now, much like Xavier Walker earlier, oh! oh. I was going to say, much like Xavier Walker earlier, Joey Avalon now wrestling his match. Xavier Walker with a beautiful counter to that, that rear naked choke. Can you believe two power guys like this? It was almost a leverage move on the map that won this? Great fundamentals, great basics. Oh, we'll Avalon put champions. Avalon putting all 250 pounds behind that back elbow, but Xavier Walker gets the boot up, stops him dead in his tracks. Irish rip reversal and a boot to the face. Avalon now full steam ahead. Catches him with the boot. He had to aim high to hit six foot seven right in the face. Now Avalon looking for that package pile. Wait driver. a minute, what is Red Jones doing? There is no need for that much swag on the apron. Oh, and Xavier Walker puts him down with a right hand. And just like that, all it took was a split second for Walker to pick up the victory, to take Four advantage minutes, of the opportunity. 51 seconds, your winner, Xavier Walker. You never know when it's coming. You never know how it's coming. But that one punch has meant knockout for every single victim of Xavier Walker. And with Ren Jones apparently in tow, a dangerous duo that's got gold in their eyes. Chicago, Illinois. We got one question for you. Who wants to get laid? I expect that one's pretty unanimous. It's a, a simple question with a simple answer. There's one guy watching that's really pro abstinence. It's offended right now. <laughs> On the inside of the ring, Trevor Outlaw uh, seething at this the the, the the show of love yeah. that Loxamana has for the for the AAW faithful. Trevor, this is what it looks like when people like and respect you. I know it's a foreign concept to you, but take notes. Well, he doesn't need people to like and respect him. All What's, he cares about is person that likes and respects okay, him. Well, and that's himself. Yeah. I was going to ask what was left, animal, vegetable, mineral, because they don't like him either. The bell's been ringing. Our feature attraction here on AAW Alive, Outlaw versus Loxamana. And uh, Outlaw did want me to point this out. Undefeated on AAW Alive. Yes, he emails me daily to remind <laughs> me about that, actually. But has Trevor Outlaw been laid lately? I don't think he has. Oh, that might be the, the, the root of his problems. If he would just <laughs> fix that one, he'd be in a better mood. Side headlock grabbed by yours rudely on Loxamana. Does Trevor Outlaw still think he's the best wrestler slash commentator in company history? Did you ask him today? I try to avoid him. Just... You know, I, I didn't ask him, but he told me anyways. Yes. Dropped out now by Outlaw. And as, as you know, I, 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 
<laughs> I joke about it all the time. I like to, to talk all the trash about Trevor Outlaw that I can as Loxamana getting a calisthenic pump. Those push-ups. Outlaw is a very, very good professional wrestler. He would not be here in AAW. He would not be undefeated on a live if he was not an incredible wrestler with potential uh, to the max and somebody that continues to deliver. And now, oh, Loxamana. Going after those, those ceremonial uh, bamboo sticks or whatever they are. And Koa making it pay. You don't mess with a man's heritage. You don't mess with his traditions. And uh, this is a very proud Hawaiian who's oh, used to competing, but you know spent a lot of time away from the sport, doing other things, pursuing other competitive fields, and really a success story because Koa's not in his 20s. He's not a young athlete in the way we would define it, but he's really coming oh. into his own now later in oh. life, and he looks incredible doing it. But what did Trevor do? Loxamana was looking for that, that signature spear, but Trevor Outlaw sideswipes him, snapmares him over, and now looking to take advantage. Laksamana, an accomplished, accomplished bodybuilder, power lifter, owns a, his, his own fitness center. Um, on top of that, his family means more to him than anything. He yeah. fights for the honor of his family. Um, he does this for his daughter. His daughter looked at him one day and said, Daddy, can you still do that? And he said, you know what? I can. And I'm going to be the very best that I can. I want to face the very best that I can. And the only place to do that is here at AAW, Outlaw Jackets. Stacks him up, goes for the cover, only able to get the two. Speaking of the best, how about the fact that we had Ray Phoenix back in an AAW ring just a few weeks ago? A, a man that is innovative, high flying. He has been the face of Lucha Libre to so many for many years. Is Outlaw on top of the belly to belly. And man, that was a near fall, but Outlaw could not put it away. I mean, you think about what Gringo Loco has meant to Lucha Libre in Chicago for two decades, what Ray Phoenix has meant to the world of Lucha Libre, and how deep he has roots here in Chicago. It was a true dream match come to life, and to see Ray Phoenix in AAW one last time, my first time seeing him live in AAW particularly, uh, was so great to see him come home and get that adulation and get that one last time in the spotlight here in Chicago. Trevor Outlaw! Walks him around the ring in a spine buster center ring, but somehow Loxamana able to kick out at two, and Outlaw can't believe it. Loxamana has kicked out of every signature maneuver that Outlaw has thrown at him here so far. And, and here comes the crux of the issue with Trevor Outlaw. We talk about Ray Fenix and what he's done to earn respect in AEW, and he's moved on to bigger things and, and all over the world. Trevor Outlaw, if you asked him right now, I bet he'd tell you he's in Ray Phoenix's league. He, he's right one and one A with him. He wouldn't say that he's in Ray Phoenix's league. He would say, Ray Phoenix isn't in Trevor Outlaw's league. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's true. But. And a disrespectful back chop from yours rudely. And Loxamana yeah. retorts with one of his own. At least hit the guy head on eye to eye if you're going to do it. And then just raise the eye of Koa, the proud Ooh. Hawaiian warrior spirit coming alive. Spinning wheel kick takes Outlaw off of his feet. Oh, near fall. Near fall only gets the two. I would love to uh, buy Trevor Outlaw for what he's worth and sell him for what he thinks he's worth. Bottom line, just such an inflated sense of self and never shy to tell you about it either. Koa feeding off of the oh. AAW faithful. Trevor Outlaw been watching his Tracy Smothers tapes. Close line ducks. Locks him oh. with a spear center ring. Koa's not done. Is this a mistake? He's taking a lot of time. Koa heading up to that high rent district, Great and he job. has Outlaw in his sights. Frog splash off the top, puts good, him down. Good height on impact. He oh! Did. Thank God, it's over. Is that an upset? You got it. Four the, minutes, the broken. forty-eight <laughs> seconds. Your winner, the Hawaiian Hitman, Koa Luxamana. The greatest. Winning streak self-proclaimed in AAW in professional wrestling history is dead. It is done. It is over. And we look to June 10th back here at Irving Hall for Crush and Destroy. Trevor Outlaw just got laid and his win streak got laid to rest. What a night. Are you kidding me? After all these months, the greatest undefeated streak in Alive history, you guys don't want to give me any promo time. But as soon as I lose, as soon as the greatest streak in Alive dies, now you want to talk to it me? To no, end, no, it did not have to end. I should be here forever. I got screwed. What is this like? 
Hey, hey, douchebag! What did you think this was about? Oh, you want to do that? You ruined the place! No, no, no! You ruined my entire life! You ruined my wedding! Straight! Do you know what the fuck is this? Under feet and no more! Under feet and no more! Feet and no more. Feet and no more. Feet and no more. I laid your ass in the middle of the ring! Like I told you I would! Under feet and no more!